Hey guys, my name is Blake, also known as the Nerd, and I'm doing a tier list. I know, about time that I did a tier list. I know a lot of people have done tier lists for pretty much everything, but I don't think I've seen a tier list for the Miku games, you know, the Crash Beauty games and some mobile games. So that's why today I'm going to break Miku history and do, I, I don't know if it's going to be the very first one of these, but the very first Project Diva and other Miku games tier list on YouTube. We're breaking some records here today, folks. I I'm excited for this. If you're excited for this as well, uh, just go ahead and do this on the video right now. Just, just do it. So the tier list you're going to see right now, uh, which will also be in the description below, there is mostly just the mainline Project Diva game from Diva to the spin-off games from Mariah, and for some reason there's also the mobile game. I didn't even think it was a mainline Project Diva game to some people, but apparently it is. But this is the best one I found online, so we're going to use this one. But I also made a list of some of the other Miku games that are not on here, but I'm going to include uh, in editing through Photoshop as well. So you guys will see the final product. And you might have noticed two different tiers that you won't find if you click uh, the link again in the description to this tier in case you want to use it yourself. Uh, these are basically custom ones that I've made specifically for this video. Let's just jump into the not played but interested catalog and the not not interested and not late category. I messed up the last one, but we're, we're just gonna go with it. So in the not clip but not interested, I'm gonna include all of the original Project Diva games. Oh, right, in the arcade, in the arcade games. So the reasoning I'm putting arcade above the original Project Diva games is because I play Future Tone and Mega Mix, and it just makes me want to play the arcade games even more, just experience the arcade-like games. That's like the ultimate goal of any Project Diva fan, is just to play the arcade games. And there's so many opportunities in California, but they're so far away from me because round one is not the easiest place to go to in California. There they're in specific cities, not anywhere like San Diego or Los Angeles. I think there's one in Redwood. I don't know why, but it's in Redwood. There's also one in Temecula I can also go to, now that I think about it. I should... I don't know, maybe Temecula one day? Who knows? And as for the original Project Diva games, Project Diva, Diva Extend, and uh, Project Diva Second, which I think... I think I put these out of order, but I'm just gonna move this up front here because it's basically the same thing. Is Extend before or Second? I feel like Diva Extended before Diva's. I, I, I don't know. I don't know the whole category with that one. But the original PSP games I'm interested in, and actually I'm really interested now that I know, like, I actually Googled last night before doing this video that the PSP is region free, so that's really cool. And it kind of makes you want to explore the whole origin of Project Diva, period. I've done the origin of Project Diva internationally with uh, Project Diva F and F second. Obviously, F is the first one ever to come out internationally, and because because the PSP is pretty cheap, I feel like. I don't know, I haven't looked up the prices of like PSPs in a while, but I feel like they're cheap enough to where I can kind of justify getting the Project Diva games, uh, mostly Diva Extend and Second. I know this seems like Dreamy Theater, I probably wouldn't get into that because it kind of looks the same as like Future Tones. Plus, it's not here on the tier list for some reason, but <laughs> if I were to put those in there, I think it'd be like the not played, but also not interested because I think it's basically the same as Future Tones that you can connect with a. A PS3, which is kind of neat. But yeah, I definitely would love at some point to play the original Project Diva games, Diva Extend and Diva Second at some point. Okay, this one might be a bit controversial to like some people, but I will explain this in a bit. But the reason I put the two Project Mirai games before the X and the not played but not interested, internationally, we got the definitive edition of Mirai. Uh, Deluxe is basically Mirai 1 Mirai 2 together. Plus the way that Nintendo handles its consoles before the Switch. The 3DS itself was not region free. Meaning if I wanted to play these games, it would cost a lot more money because I had to get a Japanese 3DS alongside Project Mirai 1 and 2. It's almost pointless to play Mirai 1 and 2 when all the songs are there in the game anyways. And Mirai 2 is just an add-on to the original Project Mirai anyways. I feel like I've seen it a bit with Project Mirai DX and that came out internationally. And I don't think it'd be worth it as I've pretty much seen everything online anyways about Project Mirai 1 and 2. Basically the only difference would be some PBs as well as the gameplay of Project Mirai 1 uh, being the only big difference. But again, I don't think that's really worth like paying a lot of money just to experience that. So not played it, but definitely not interested because we got the definitive edition overall, and I'm pretty happy about that one. I'm not sponsored by Arrowhead, but uh, if they want to sponsor me, um, hit me up my <laughs> my business email. Now we're getting to the core games, the games that I've played 
So we're gonna start off with Project Diva F. So for those of you who don't know, I have a very interesting story with Project Diva F. I started this game as a demo back when like PS3 was still around, they had demos. And one of the demos was Project Diva F. I remember playing Wicked the Girl a lot in the demos, but that never really convinced me to get a PS3 for some reason. I was like a big, massive Wii U person I thought the Wii was gonna do very well. It never did. But then as time went on, I actually got a PS3 back at a uh, last year, almost actually a year ago. One of the games I got was F because I wanted to experience it. And it's actually a good stepping stone internationally because of this. Looking back at it now, I don't think there's a lot of playability since there is a lot of songs on here that are also in Future Tone and Mega Mix. Nothing a whole lot interesting changes about them except for the graphics. You can pet them a limited amount of times. I guess that's cool if you want to do that, but I'm personally not a fan of doing that. You can give them unlimited gifts and whatnot, which again, it's up to you if you like it or not, but I, I don't think I will be a big fan of that. Uh, that is not the big reason why I don't like the game as much. Like, I like the game, but I don't think there's as much replay value. I feel like the only time it's going to replay is if they want to see, like, the exclusive uh, version of World and Dance Hall, uh, the PV for it, as well as, like, playing... What is that Red and Lance song? Oh my god. Gosh, it's gonna kill me now that I don't actually remember the name of the song. Just put it on screen. So for that reason, I'm gonna put it on the B tier for this one. Because even though I feel like there's not as much replay value to this game, I understand the origin, and for international, this is actually a really good first step uh, for people to get into the whole project. Either. And then we move on to F second, and my gosh, there are so many improvements with this game. Not only with the rhythm, because you have the double nose, the double star, big star thing, which you need to flick like two of the sticks, I never mentioned anything about the charts in the game. You have so many backgrounds in the songs where if you do a special note, it's exclusive to F second, and there's so many cool effects within that one. The DLC songs are really good, and unlike an app where they're available to you right off the bat, you have to pay for them, which I don't know how many people actually feel about that, but the DLC songs in F-Second are really worth it, and the interactivity is even better in my opinion, because they've actually limited the amount of times you pet, they've limited the times you can give gifts, because remember in F you can give and pet a limited amount of times, and to me, that made the vocalize feel like human beings, and it makes me upset for the next game because they completely tore that out. I liked when they had limits, they were relatable, why did they get rid of it? Not to mention, I think F second was like the best game to like do the custom charge. Sure, you can do it in F, but like F second because of so many things uh, improved with the game. Alongside like the double most there's also like the little thing that you can make images out of or like little drawings out of, and I think that's really cool. This goes in S tier, instant S tier. This is by far one of the best games of the Project Diva series. By far. I feel bad for actually being a Wii U person that I like look at this chart. And then we have Project Diva X. My, how the mighty have fallen. And this is why I don't have an F tier because I, I don't think there's a bad Miku game, but there is an underwhelming one. And this is the pure definition of underwhelming. Let me explain the positives and negatives about Diva X so that I, you guys can understand my justification for its tiering. What it is right is it has so many exclusive songs that you cannot play anywhere else and I think that's cool. You have Satisfaction, you have ID, you have Babylon, you have the Underhanded Rangers song which is a really cool one. But with that in mind there's also a lot of negative to this game. The story mode particular why is it the main thing in the game why is it not a side thing the story has some funny dialogue but like it didn't need the story on top of that the way you get the costumes in the game is so stupid why do you have to rely on luck and like chances like kind of like gotcha style in order to get the modules what well, that was never the case and even ever a second in those games you could just buy it but here it's like you gotta have some luck and gambling chances in order for you to get the module you want. I don't get it. Does anyone get it? I... And the sad thing is, this is my very first, like, actual Project Diva game that wasn't a demo, so the fact that I'm kind of, like, dissing on it kind of shows that it's not a good Project Diva game. It had potential to be good, but sadly, kind of failed in those aspects. I'm sorry. You're gonna go deep. You could have been a lot better. 
So after this is Future Tone, but I'm gonna take a step back from the Project Diva stuff and actually talk about the spin-off Project Mirai DX, which I talked about a little bit in the not played but not interested category with the two Project Mirai games. Mirai DX, again, we got the definitive version and I absolutely love it. I love the songs that are on it, even some exclusive. I love the fact that Gumi was in it and she'll never appear in any other Project Diva game again. That saddens me now that I say that out loud. I love the fact that there's like events you can do, like there's certain holiday stuff you can get, like, the the, the little world itself is really cool. I like the fact that you can play Poyo Poyo. I thought that was like really cool that they added that in there. And then like a little mini game you can play with like the Vocaloids. I think it's called Mikaversi, which is like reversity. And I've done a Let's Play of it. So if you want to check it out, it's in the top right corner. I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, yeah, it's in the top right corner. <laughs> Look, this is this is my video on my channel. I'm allowed to promote my own stuff. Do not tell me what to do. And the aesthetics, the look of the game, I, I think is one of the cutest 3DS games out there. And it's also one of the best. Before we had Mega Mix on the Switch, it was, also, it was pretty cool to have a Miku game so that I can exit out of it whenever I want it in case I get bored of it and still have like Smash Brothers and Pokemon to play on it. I thought it was like really cool. But with that being said, I'm gonna put it on the A list or the A tier. It definitely deserves a spot in the A tier for sure. All right, let's get back into the mainline Project Diva game, shall we? And we have what is arguably, actually hands down, no arguments made, the best Project Diva game out there, Future Tone. It feels so good. After wanting to play the arcade games for so long to actually have it, it feels so good. Granted, some of the controls are a little bit difficult with the PS4 controller, but that's something, you know, you kind of get used to. But Future Tone is so good! You have literally hundreds of songs to choose from. They all control so well. The controls are so unique. And when they added DLC, it was really good. The only DLC that disappointed me in Future Tone was the one where they gave you, like, only two costumes. It was, like, almost $10 for it. Like, what were they thinking? And I actually found out online that this game won from Game Informer the best room game of 2017. Which made me super happy because it actually deserves so much praise. <laughs> and yet the readers didn't agree with them and they chose Just Dance as their favorite. Are we cringing yet? I don't want to hear anything about Just Dance, ever. It's official. This, this is even higher. My favorite all-time Project Diva game, Future Tone, definitely deserves a spot on the S tier. So good. Cannot be beat. Like, I, I'm very satisfied with these two games, F-Second and Future Tone, being on s tier. They really deserve this spot. And now we go into Mega Mix. I know a lot of people have, like, mixed feelings about it, but I'll give my two cents on this. On one hand, I can understand why people have like some mixed feelings about it. It doesn't have as many songs on there. I think mostly because the Switch can hand can't handle all the songs. It's not a big power machine like a lot of people think it is. There is some limitations. And actually, funny thing, I didn't know this, but uh, the reason Mega Mix is like over 30 gigabytes is because the Eiffel Tower is a model. I, I didn't know that. Someone pointed that out. Like I think either in the premiere of one of the Miniature Night episodes or like in, in some comments, and I was like. That would explain a whole lot. But there's also the fact that Mega Mix doesn't really offer all that much except for a touchscreen mode, which is kind of similar to Mario DX. There's also the Mix mode, which is basically you're just waving your Joy-Cons. That is the worst mode in Mega Mix. And then other than that, you can make like custom shirts, which you can't even share online. What is the point of the mode if you can't share it online? Like you can take photos of it, but that's about it. But on the other hand, I like this so much because this has literally been a dream of mine ever since the Switch was announced. Actually, no, not even before the Switch was announced. When Project Diva X was around, I thought it was a good game to have on what was then the Nintendo NX. And that never came to fruition. And then Future Tone came out, and then the Nintendo Switch was out. Future Tone needs to be on the Switch because it's so good. It's meant to be on Nintendo console. And we never really got anything about it until Mega Mix was announced, and it was on the Nintendo Switch. My mind was blown! It was like, at that point, my dream had come true. For a, a mainline Project Diva game to appear on any other console, 
it's so good. Like, it's actually mind-blowing. And because it's actually done pretty well, from what I understand, the future of the Project TV series is staggering because we can have, like, multi-console games now. And, like, like the next Project Diva game, I feel like it's going to be on the PS5 as well as on the Nintendo Switch. I have a good feeling about that. It's Future Tone, like, kind of watered down the DLC, which is basically all the songs you could get for free in Future Tone. You pay, like, the full, what is it now, $40 on it, which is kind of a ripoff. But if you've never played a Project Diva game, that's more than reasonable. This is actually meant for, like, people who've never played Project Diva game, don't have a PS4, and you could just jump into that. And what's also really nice is it's like a right. Only better because I can have Proxy Diva in Smash Ultimate and Mario Kart and Pokemon. To have all of those in one console as a Nintendo fan and a Proxy Diva fan is so satisfying. I'm putting this on 8. I don't care what anyone says, I'm putting this on 8. It's not any better than Future Tone, but the fact that it's on Nintendo console, which I've been dreaming about for so long, makes up for all the flaws that it has, despite the flaws being obviously out there. If it wasn't for the flaws, it'd also be on S. But it's high A, and I can appreciate it for that. And thus, we are on the final one for this, this chart thing, but don't worry, I also have some listed down here on like a little list thing. I'm not gonna show off the full list because then we're gonna talk about some things. Project Sakai. Hands down, the definitive Miku mobile game. It reminds me so much, I don't know if anyone remembers this, but does anyone remember Tap Tap Revenge? It reminded me of that, but to a greater scale. Like, there's so many good animations, the song choice is great. There's gacha, but you know, you're not really forced to use gacha. You have a great song selection. There is even some songs that are not in the Project Diva series, that are in Project Sakai, that I really wish would be in future Project Diva games or Mega Mix if they decide to like include DLC or Future Tone for that. The only problems I have uh, is I don't speak or read Japanese all that well, so it's hard for me to understand some things. On top of that, even though I can update the game because, believe it or not, on Apple phones, it's actually not that hard to like switch areas and then download the game and update it. I, and I would do that, except I have a subscription to Apple Music for my family, so like I can't risk downloading all my music and just to update the game, so unfortunately it's displayed there. <laughs> Sad. I kind of wish I could do that, but then I risk downloading all the music again. I think I've downloaded like hundreds of songs. But if you can find ways to like play this game, again, for Apple users, it's just as simple as like changing your location to Japan by using a different address. This is worth your time. Easy, easy S tier. Like bottom S, but still S tier nonetheless. The, like, these are the top three games I feel every Miku fan or yeah, just Miku gamers in general should play. You're, you're guaranteed gonna have a blast with these. This is what happens when you talk. <laughs> this is what happens when I talk at least. I, I'm gonna have like no water by the end of this video. I, I sh should probably hide this water bottle somewhere. Especially if it makes that loud of a noise when I close it. That's all of the games that are on this tier. Uh, so I'm gonna save it, and you guys are gonna see the final Photoshop product, including all the games I mentioned down here, which means I'm gonna have to do a little bit more um, research on the finding the logo so that I can put this on there. So you guys are gonna see the finished product. Meanwhile, I'll just discuss. I'm gonna also write down some of these as well, which first off, is the two VR games. We have VR Future Live and just Hatsune Miku VR. Also, Windows just loves to interrupt itself, apparently. So VR Future Tone and VR are two completely different VR games, though they kind of play similarly. One of them, you're basically in a virtual concert, and the other one, you're rhythmatically playing. The only difference is, one of them is made by Sega and it looks really nice, and the other one, Kinda looks like an unfinished project. Like, it's close to being finished, but not really. And like, not to discredit people who made Miku VR, I'm pretty sure they put a lot of effort into it, but like, I don't know, something about it just doesn't look all that great. And for those reasons, uh, VR Future Life is gonna go in the not played but interested, because if I get VR at some point, it's gonna be at the very bottom of not played but interested, because out of like the games that I would be interested in, uh, VR Life would be the least interested, because I feel like if I'm going to do VR, I wanna at least have some play experience. VR? I can see from YouTube, and I will never play it because of how terrible not only it looks, but how terrible it seems like it controls for a VR game. Like, I don't know. If someone can convince me that it's not as bad as I think it is, I might move it up in the future, but for me, I don't see myself playing this game at all. Like, it is that bad. 
Next up, I want to talk about Miku Click 1 and 2, which back in the times was actually a very different experience from what I remember. Because it wasn't like the original Project Diva games where you have like push buttons and whatnot and they were flying on the screen. It was from the side and you had like, I can't even describe it, but it was like you had different directions and each one had like a different like Japanese symbol. Like I think it was like kanji or hiragana? Oh, it was a kanji. You flicked it like in either direction it faced and it was like really cool. The best part was this is before it went like all crazy and you could get ads and whatnot. You paid for like the game itself and you basically got everything. I don't know if they included DLC. I don't even remember. I think Flick 2 had DLC. I, I don't even remember. If anyone has actually played uh, Flick 2, let me know if there was DLC because I don't even remember if there was like DLC. Yeah, it was definitely a really cool experience for sure and it definitely gave me a reason to go back to it, especially like in places where I didn't need like sell your data it was always a good game to uh, to play in those aspects and be able to play the game as it is without like sell your data or like trying to find out where it is a lot of games and sell your data now and then so if I were to put it on the tier list I would definitely have to put it on A because actually both of them are A because back when they were around they were pretty fun games to play <laughs> oh boy okay I, I just saw this eventually I had to talk about this Miku Tap Wonder. Now, for those of you who don't know, and it's gonna be at the top right corner, ha, I beat you, I beat you to the punchline. I did a special video for this game, but the premise of the game is, is like a cookie clicker, basically. You just tap the screen, you get more points, and then you use the points to customize the character, etc. And knowing there was a cookie clicker weeks before the game came out, kind of disappointed me because I was expecting it to be like Tap Tap Revenge, where it was like, a little tapping rhythm game and then I got the email saying that it wasn't that and I'm like oh great well I'm not sure how to feel about it now <laughs> the only other thing I could bring it was that for a while they had like fan interactions where they held contests for songs to appear in the game that were exclusively for the game as well as costumes and heck even content creators like myself had a chance to make videos for it and I thought that was really cool but then they died out of that. I don't know why they did that. I thought that was like really cool that they did that, but it died out. The only reason I even have the game to this day is that I can see my name on the credits because I thought, hey, that's really cool. For once, I actually worked with like Cryptid on something. Maybe someone at Cryptid will see it as like, oh, hey, you actually worked with us at some point, that's really cool. It's one of those games where you just play it for like a few minutes and then you just exit out of there and don't play it for like a month or so. <laughs> and then you jump back into it for a few more minutes and then the and then the cycle repeats. It's not really worth it my life. And for that reason, I'm gonna put it on B tier. It had potentials and it was really cool when it did have those potentials and it shown. But the game itself, very lackluster. So for the next three that I'm going to talk about, I've actually played these on my phone before recording this video, so they're pretty much fresh in my mind. The first one I'm gonna talk about is Miku Jump. It's simple. You just have to make Miku Jump. You have platforms that move uh, in various speeds and like various motions, and you gotta get Miku to the top. I can't say gotta get Miku to the top very well for some reason, unless I slow it down, holy crap. Crap my English. And that's basically it. On some occasions, I, I don't know how many times you have to play, but there's ads that play. You can also get coins by playing ads, you know, the basic mobile stuff. It's cute. I think it's cute, especially the theme that they have with the game, which is yarn. When I actually first saw this before playing the game, I instantly thought of Yoshi's Wooly on the 3DS. That's what the graphics remind me of, is you have this cute yarn aesthetics with Miku and whatnot. I cannot be the only one that thinks that, right? It's simple, it's cute, that's pretty much put it in a nutshell. I put it on C because of how simple it is. And the things I say for Miku Jump also apply to Miku Train. It's basically a simple mobile game, you just drag your finger around, you know, you avoid obstacles. Uh, there's blocks, you have to either match or have more than the amount that it's shown on the block. You can get more by touching little yarn balls, which is pretty cute and whatnot. But the only issue I have with it is that there are so many ads in the game. And I understand it's a free-to-play mobile game. But every level you complete, which is not that long, I think it's like maybe a minute at most, you get an ad. And that frustrates me. Every single time you even touch the game, there is an ad somewhere. Like, when you hit next, it's just a way for you to say, oh, I, I want to play an ad. It's basically like a slider game with multiple ads. It's a cute game, but 
pulling down the ads. But I feel like for that reason, it's also gonna be in C. Again, it's casual, it's fun, it's cute. Both of them are meant to be played for a little bit every day if you want, or not every day, you could do it for like a few months or weeks or whatnot, but it's just those ads, man. It's just those ads that really just bother me. Too many of them, and I actually like, got so fed up with how many ads play whenever like wanted to play the next level. I just like quit the game almost immediately. It was that much. Miku Tycoon, surprisingly enough, is not like Miku Train or Miku Jump. It's not simple, it's simple controls, but there's a little bit more to this game. You, like you had to learn a little bit more about it. Uh, so basically what Miku Tycoon is, is I guess something similar to Uno, but there's also a bit more rules to it. It's a harder version of Uno. And I actually like it because of that. I think it works really well as a mobile game. And I like Miku Train, the games last a little bit longer to where it's understandable where you get an advertisement every single time. And what's really nice is that they give you a warning, like a 3 second warning, that there's going to be an ad. They will fully wear there's ads in this game. And I have not played against like online people in Castle Pretty Sure better than I am, I just got into the game. But the fact that you can play either by yourself with CPUs or with someone online is I think is actually really cool. Uh, the only downside there is parts. I don't know how many huts are, I think they're like five or six. And if you use up all those, that's it, you're done for the day, you have to wait for another day and whatnot. That's kind of a bummer. I don't know if it applies to like playing online. I'm pretty sure it does, I'm pretty sure it does. But yeah, I, I do like a mobile game that kind of makes me think it's not nothing like really simple or just like sliding the fingers, not doing a whole lot of strategy. And this game really satisfies the strategy thing, which I do kind of like in mobile games. Like I like puzzle games um, when it comes to mobile games the most. This game, Miku Tycoon, goes in B tier. I think it's actually a step forward and something that I really like about mobile games. Well, specifically Miku mobile games. I think that's the best one. If I were to play any of the Miku mobile games, I definitely would like to play Miku Tycoon. And then finally, Miku Logic Paint S, but I'm also going to include like Miku Logic Paint because I'm pretty sure it's the same thing except, you know, different I don't know, it's like the same images or it's like different images. I don't know it's different platforms, but it's basically it's basically Pie Cross. I remember because there was actually a Pokemon Pie Cross game. Somehow I remember the title of the game through Pokemon. How weird is that? You have a certain amount of numbers diagonally and horizontally that you have to basically fill in. If you do it wrong, you get an X. There's no penalties though, but basically your goal is to complete a picture or on some levels, complete part of a picture because there's different modes. As a game like that, I think it's really well done, especially for Miku game. I think this is the best non-rhythm Miku game out of all of them. It's so smooth, the graphics look so nice, and the gameplay is so, so well. I saw like a cannon of spit, and I didn't know it landed on my computer one. I'm sorry for disgusting some of you, but I just wanna make sure it didn't land anywhere near my computer because I don't want it to shut up for some reason. And again, like with Sneaky Flig on the mobile version, you actually pay to actually play the game, which means you don't get the ads, which is great because you see how annoying those ads are in mobile games. Like they're constantly everywhere all the time. Like even if you beat like one level, which is like 30 seconds, boom, there's an ad. Beats the living crap out of Miku VR. I had to look at my notes to make sure I was talking about the right one. So with that, I'm actually gonna put this game on A tier. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you're gonna see it on the screen somewhere. I don't know where I'm gonna put it, but you guys are seeing the finished tier list. Anyways, with that, again, if you want to see the tier list, which doesn't have all the games I mentioned in here, it goes from uh, the original Project Diva games and then uh, the spin-offs Project Mirai and Project Sakai, those are the only ones, but you can find it in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop me a like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified for any future videos. And with that being said, I'm surprised my lungs have not given up. My name is Blake, also known as a nerd, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So until we meet again, do remember to take care. I need a full stream lapse so that I can stop this at the same time. Why, why am I telling you this? Holy crap, 51 minutes?